Hello everyone. In this video, we will be exploring the classic lead code problem, lead code one, that is to sum. So we'll be starting off by understanding the problem statement better. So let's break the problem down. The question says that we have been given an array of integers that is nums and we have an integer target. Those are our two inputs for this question. What we have to return as an output is a pair of indices that is indices of two numbers which two numbers any two numbers that add up to the target and that is pretty much what the problem is i've basically read it out i've tried to break it down for you and that's why to understand what they mean by this with the examples that they've given so we have two inputs one is nums the other is target given our target we have to find any two elements in this array such that they add up to this target and we can see very clearly in this array we have 2 and 7 they add up to the target that is 9 so we have to return the index indices of these two elements and the indices are index, index 0 and index 1 that is the output and they made it easier for us in the way that they said that we can return this uh, we can return the answer in any order so we can return either 0 or 1 or 1 and 0 so we can do that and we don't have to use the same we can't use the same element twice which is demonstrated in this example so they are saying that if the target is 6 you cannot return this particular uh, value twice so you can't return 0 and 0 that would be wrong we can only use one element twice they've also made it clear that the same value can repeat across the elements in the very next example but the ind since the indices are different since they are actually two separate elements they can be returned as two separate indices and that will be our answer in that particular case and we have been guaranteed that there is exactly one solution so we don't have to worry about a case where we can't even find a pair that adds up to the target all right so let's try to understand that by way of another example which I have over here. So the way we will be solving this problem is by following two approaches. Approach number one will be brute force. What does brute force mean? In case you do not know what it means, brute force simply means that we try out every single possibility. What does that mean in this context? That means that we have our array over here, which I will be copying. So we have our array over here. I will take one element at a time and I will be summing it up with one of the other elements one by one. And I will try to check if any of the sums equals my target. That means that if I'm starting with 2 as my current element, I'll be comparing it with each of the other elements. How do I do that? So first, I compare it with 7. I compare it with 7. And I check whether 2 plus 7 equals my target or not. It does not. So what do I do in that case? I simply check the next combination. I check 2 with 5. This, we have checked this, this does not work for us. So I will check 2 with 5. 2 plus 5 equals 7. 7 is again not equal to 13. So we move forward. We check with 6. 2 plus 6 equals 8. It does not equal 13 again. So we, what we have established so far is that there is no element which after summing up with 2 equals our target. So we don't have to deal with 2 again we can deal with the rest of the array okay so what i'll do is i will copy my array again over here for clarity i'll write that the current element was 2 c is the current element that was 2 the index of 2 was 0 now my current element is 7 The index of which is 1. And we will do the same process for 7. We don't have to worry about 2 
because we already tried that out. We found out that seven plus two does not equal to our target. So we check seven with the rest of the values. So we check seven plus five equals 12. 12 is close, but we are not looking for close. We are looking for an exact match. It should be equal to 13. So we move forward. This does not work. We move forward. We check seven plus six. Does that equal to 13, which is our target? The answer is yes. So whenever we find our target in such a manner, we will simply return the indexes or indices. That would be the proper way to say it. So the index of seven is one and the index of six, which is our counterpart, which is our complement, which is basically forming our pair, which sums up to 13. The index of that is zero, one, two, three. So this will be our answer. And that is the brute force approach. I mean, if we did not find our answer over here either, we would try out five with the rest of the values that are in front of five and then so on and so forth. So this is basically the problem. This is how we'll solve it using brute force. So one small problem with brute force is that it takes a lot of time, perhaps not in this particular array because it is a very small array, but in an array of, let's say, 1000 elements, 10,000 elements, 1 million elements, it will take a lot of time to compute. In real life, that is not something we can afford. You have to be fast, you have to be quick. So the limitation of this particular approach is that the time complexity is O of n square. And that is because there are, let's say, n number of elements, the n number of elements, and in these n number of elements, we will be passing to all n elements at most n number of times. So you have n number of elements, we will be passing through them at, at most n number of times. So the worst complexity that we can have in this approach is O of n square. All right. That is a brute force approach. It does the job, but it doesn't do the job very well unless you're looking to solve for space. This is a good solution if it comes to space complexity. And the space complexity is O of 1, that is constant space, because we don't really use any extra space to solve our problem. We do it taking one element at a time. So it's constant space. Two elements, one element which is our current, and one more element that is being compared to. So that is the brute force approach. Our next approach is what well, there is no particular name for it, but we'll be simply using a hash map to solve our problem. A hash map, if you're uh, familiar with some of the older languages, a dictionary, if you use Python, an object, perhaps if you use JavaScript. So uh, that is what we'll be using to solve our problem. Hash map, dictionary, object. All right. Now, what does this approach entail? This approach says that, you know what, instead of checking each element with every other element again and again and again, I mean, we're not doing it again and again and again, but what we're doing is that we are still making a lot of comparisons. So we have to basically reduce this time complexity. That is the motivation behind this approach. So what we're doing is that we will be passing through this array that we have. I just write it down again. 2, 7, 5, and 6. We will be passing through this array exactly once. Here we were doing this at most n square times, right? 4 into 4, that is 16 times. I said that we should only be passing through this array once and that should be more than sufficient. So what do we have to do to accomplish that? I said that let's get a little storage. Let's get a little storage in the form of a hash map. which will be quite poorly drawn because I can't draw straight lines. So in this hash map, what will we be storing? We will be storing the value that we have processed. For example, if you have processed two, two will go here. All right. And we will be storing its index, 
Now you may be confused as to why we are doing that. And after I explain the approach, it will be clear to you. So don't worry about it. So we have our array. I say that you take out one element. You check in this map, in this dictionary, in this object, whether there is a value that upon summing with our current value could equal the target. So I said that if we have two, if we have two, we need to find its counterpart such that the sum of two and its counterpart equal my target, which was 13. So our counterpart in that case would be 13 minus two, that is 11. So we are looking for 11 in this map. Right. So we're basically saying that when we are at two, we have to find its counterpart that is 11. Does 11 exist in this hash map? We just made the hash map. We have just started the process. So naturally it does not. So we haven't been find, we haven't been able to find two's counterpart. So we move on to the next value. And, but before we do that, what we'll also do is that we'll say that, okay, now we have process two. So we'll store this in the hash map and you will see by soon. The index was zero. Indexes are zero, one, two, and three for your clarity. So we have stored two in the hash map and we've established that two's counterpart does not exist in the hash map. So we move forward. We explore seven. So 13 minus seven is six. Does six exist in the hash map? We are not looking in. Uh, at the next elements in the area right now. So don't get confused by what we did in the brute first approach. We are only and only looking in the hash map. 13 minus 7 is 6. Does 6 exist in the hash map? No, only one value exists in the hash map and that is 2. So we say, okay, no, nothing exists. Uh, that could sum up to 13 over here. So we put 7 in this hash map with its index and we move forward. We go over to pi. 13 minus 5 gives us 8. Does 8 exist? 7 exists. 2 exists. 8 does not. So we do not do anything about it and we simply put 5 over here. We put its index for future purposes and we move forward to the next element. In our next element, we have 6. 13 minus 6 gives us 7. Do we have seven in our hash map? And the answer is a big fat yes, we do. So we have found our element. We know the current index, that is three. We know the index of the counterpart that we have been able to find in the hash map, that is one. So we return three with one or one with three. The answer allows any order. So that is basically how you calculate this solution in one pass. To understand the theoretical basics of it, the time complexity is significantly better. It is O of N. And the space complexity on the other hand is slightly bigger than O of one that we had previously. And that is O of N because at any given point in time, we can store a maximum of N number of elements in this particular hash map. So this is some space that we are allocating. Therefore, this will be the space complexity for this particular solution. And these are the two approaches that we need to solve this particular problem. And in the next video, we will be doing exactly that. We will be implementing the hash map solution. So stay tuned. Follow for more.